Hi everyone, welcome back to RTS or Record the Story, whatever you want to call us, just call us good, absolutely. So what are we going to do today? Well, the time has come, it's time to start our photo series. I've been dragging my feet because this is a category that has plagued me from day one of scrapbooking and it will always plague me because it is a big, big category. Yes, so I'm going to try to keep these videos short and concise but then just cover one topic per video. And I think that will help because there's so much to talk about. And there's so many things that I probably won't be able to cover because it maybe it does not apply to me or maybe I don't have those issues. So we can just have an ongoing conversation. So basically one topic per video and we'll just go until we run out of topics. Okay, so now when it comes to our photos, I just wanna say one thing. I think this is why card making is so popular. <laughs> Without a doubt, I'm just going to be honest. I think that's why card making has taken on a life of its own away from scrapbooking because of this right here, photos. Because if you're a card maker by heart, this is one supply, one category, one problem you don't even have. You just threw it out the window. And I think that's the appeal of card making. You get everything that we have in scrapbooking, but you don't have to deal with this. <laughs> And you know what I'm talking about. So then I think that's why the whole planner community grew and grew and grew from card making and scrapbooking because then you get the whole thing of scrapbooking, you get the whole thing of card making, and you don't have to worry about making something for someone you don't even send to. So I think as time has went on and people want to be creative, but you don't have to deal with so many obstacles for scrapbookers. It's photos. For card makers, it's the abundance of cards, who you're sending it to, and it's the postage. And so I think that's why the planner community has such an attraction because you're using that same type of creativity, the same type of supplies, but you're using it in a productive manner to increase your life. So I think that's why the planning community is bigger than card making and card making is bigger than scrapbooking because of this. Photos. Photos is... <laughs> Photos is the beast. Let's just be real. It is. Okay, so we're going to talk about today downloading your photos and how are you downloading them and why you need to download them. Now, I know this is a category that some of us are very, very diligent and very passionate about. And then there are some that's just the stragglers. There's just like, you know, when I get around to it. And then there's some, like most everyone in my family, that does not do a single downloading of photos. <laughs> No matter how many times I preach, they don't download their photos. That just isn't something that is near and dear to their heart like it is for us as scrapbookers. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So the first thing of anything that you want to organize, anything you want to do, you know the rule. You have to gather what you have. <laughs> and so that means you need to gather whatever device or, or how many different devices you use to take photos and also videos because it's not just photos videos it's all the same thing okay so for me i also have my iphone but it's up above because that's how i record and so i don't only use my big fuji for trips this was my first fuji and this is my trusted fuji and then my ipad i don't use this for taking photos but i know some people do so primarily for most of us it's one device or two devices or sometimes if you're like me three <laughs> You know, it depends. But I will tell you, as I've gotten older and photos just continues to be an ongoing issue since 2004 <laughs> when I went digital. Yes, how many years ago is that? 15 years. Yes, this has been a 15 year problem for me. And I had to tell myself one day photos is always going to be the, the needle in the haystack. It's always going to be a problem for me because what I want is what something I can never attain and what is that I wish I could have every photo I have taken printed and so it would be readily available it's impossible for us to well especially for me you know and I think for a lot of us we take so many photos it's impossible to think that every photo we take we can have printed nor is that realistic okay now I know there are some scrapbookers that only print as you go and I can't do that either so I'm in the middle I want some photos printed but I realize I can't have every photo printed and I'm not I cannot be the type of scrapbooker that only prints as I scrap so I'm in the middle and that's why I struggle because it's like okay well I want to be here but I have to do this but this is what's realistic and that's what happens and so that's what we're going to cover today how do I handle 
because our photo series is, um, you know, something we have to talk about. We just need to do it, right? We just need to do it. So I'm going to bite the bullet and we're going to do this. Okay. So gather all your devices. And I see, I went down a rabbit hole. Martha, you see what I'm saying? I went down a rabbit hole. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyways, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So first of all, gather your devices and then you're going to make sure that every device you have uh, has everything removed from that device. Okay. And we're going to talk about how often we're going to talk about that in just a minute, because why is that? If you do not start with a fresh slate, you're going to be on a continuous carousel of where is this photo? When was that taken? And you're just never going to have a clean slate. So I think, I think that's the first thing to start with when you're dealing with photos, you have to start with a clean slate. Now for me, I start with a clean slate every first of the month. I have done this for years since I st started going digital that every first of the month, I download my photos from the previous month. Okay. The only time in 15 years that that did not happen is when I had a computer crash and then I was scrambling, trying to figure where, uh, what I was going to do. I didn't lose any photos because I download every month. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, the importance of that. Okay. So downloading photos. See, I'm already, uh, I have three pages of notes. Haven't followed any of them. Lord, help me. <laughs> help me, Jesus. Okay. Maybe I need to start over. No, keep on going. Keep on going. Okay. So what I'm saying is you need to have a clean slate. And then also too, with that, perhaps downscale and streamline how many devices you are using to take your photos. And I say, start with your favorite and start with the best. Okay. My best of all of this, even what's up above my iPhone is this Fuji uh, F30. This is the best camera I've ever owned. I've had it for years. And when I go on big trips, I still take this. I know I look like a nerd with a little point and shoot with a digital camera when everybody else is using iPhones. Well, when I'm going on a trip and I know I have lots of photos, that's my trusty little steed because it's, it's not that heavy and I can it, turn it on and just go. Other than with the iPhone, I think it's very clunky, but it's very convenient. So I use two devices. I don't use this. I try not to use this and I know this is terrible. This was expensive. It was a gift from my husband, but I'm just going to be telling you honest. It ain't my favorite. No, it is not. It does not do the work that this little machine does right here. So you have to, that has to be your decision, uh, as to what device you're going to use. But I say, let it be the best and let it be your favorite, because if it's not your favorite, you're not going to use it. And I will tell you, I took that on a trip we went to um, we went to a plantation down south, and I had beautiful photos, but they did not turn out what I pictured in my brain if I would have took this. So, uh, mistake learned there. Yes. So, and if it's just your iPhone and you don't have to deal with all these other devices, then that is exactly what you should do. Like I said, I do both. Okay. Bigger trips, I take this. The rest, I use my iPhone. So then, once you uh, streamline your devices, uh, tell, tell yourself, no, that's no longer going to be an option. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do this and I'm not going to do that. So you're down to your device. Okay. For me, uh, I have streamlined and I only use two devices, even though it broke my husband's heart that I don't like this camera. <laughs> Someday, maybe when life slows down, I could, you know, I don't know. It's just an okay camera. And I think it's very clunky. Try to try to carry that around your neck for eight hours. It doesn't work very good. <laughs> no. Okay. So then what you need to do is get these images off this device and onto a, your computer or you take it somewhere. That's the two options. Either you do it yourself or someone else has to do it. Okay. And if you're not equipped to do it on your own, then get someone else's help and then ask them to continue to help you with that. And sometimes, and I know this is not a popular decision. Sometimes that means sitting down and learning how to do something. And this is what I ran to, into a couple years when my computer crashed. I had to get a whole new system of everything. Old software wasn't compatible. This wasn't compatible. I had to do this, do that. It took uh, some time, but I just had to bite the bullet and do it. And so sometimes you're going to have to learn how to do it on your own as far as t your devices. Okay. And there's no sense going into particulars how to download because everybody has different devices. Everybody has different computers. Some people use HP. Some people use Mac. 
I do both. <laughs> I do a little bit of everything in my life. And so it's up to you what device you're going to use and it's up to you to download them. Okay. Now, how do I download them? A very simple manner as I download them per month and then I put them in a folder in my photo uh, file and it just simply is 2018 January, 2018 February, 2018 March and so on for the entire month. I do a folder a separate folder for every month of the year because I download my photos once per month. Okay, now here's a big tip I will tell you is that you get your planner or your calendar or your desk cal calendar or your wall calendar, whatever you do to plan your life. We all use something, okay? Even if it's your phone, a lot of people use the phone. You need to get your planner out or your calendar in every first of the month or whenever you want to download. I think the first of the month is easiest because then you have all of that month in one folder, all concise and clean and simple. Okay. I think saving photos per month, and I'm going to talk to you in length about that because I've had many conversations with uh, tech guys and uh, photo guys about don't downloading per month. Okay. Because might as well just grab a cup of coffee. This is going to get chatty. So what I'm going to recommend is that you get your planner out and then the first of every month or whenever you want to. And so some people would say, well, I don't have enough photos to save every month. Well, you may not feel you have enough photos to save every month, but you have enough photos to download every month. Meaning, say you only took 25 photos. That's still 25 photos you don't want to lose. So you need to get into a habit of routinely downloading your photos. Now, this is just downloading. We're going to talk about backups, backing up your photos in just a minute, okay? So however, whatever device you're going to use, whatever device you're going to download them onto, that's totally your preference, but I would say consistently every person who is a scrapbooker or just takes photos, you need to start a routine of uh, downloading your photos per month. You just need to. It's, it's almost like one of those things that's not an option. And for some of us who have lost photos, this becomes very important very quickly because I do not think I know of anybody who hasn't lost photos. I lost an entire month one time because I deleted it and thinking I had it backed up and I didn't. It was just maybe a brain fog. That just has never happened to me, but it did. And I scrambled and I cried and I had to get over it. So, uh, yes, it's just something that I did. I don't know what happened, but of all these years, there's one month that I messed it up. <laughs> but a uh, short story put it on your planner, put it on your calendar and start religiously downloading your photos. Now, if that is not important to you, it doesn't have to be. Okay. But for most of us, and I will tell you that my uh, dad has had a house fire and he lost everything, everything, even the shirt on his back. Honestly, he lost everything. And still to this day, he will tell you that the most precious thing, the thing he misses most is his photos. So, and he's not a scrapbooker. Okay. So photos is the gig. So why not take the time to, uh, to download and save them and protect them? because we, uh, we go make a cup of coffee every day. So <laughs> honestly, downloading photos can be very quick. By the time you do a couple cups of coffee a day, you can have your photos downloaded. So again, sorry, rabbit hole. Uh, in your planner, the first of the month, the 15th of the month, the 30th of the month, whatever suits your schedule, whatever suits your style, I say download. And I like downloading per month. Okay. Every single month, whether I go on a trip, whether I don't go on a trip, whether I have a busy life or a non-busy life, whether I'm going somewhere or I'm at home every single month, I download my photos. Okay. The only time I didn't is when my computer crashed and I had to scramble, but that's another topic. Okay. So you can see in July, download photos, August, download photos. Okay. I have it in every one of my months in my planner. And by the way, is this not a pretty planner? <laughs> I got this for my birthday from my hubby. It's the new uh, Happy Planner from, um, this is the one that's in Hobby Lobby, but absolutely in love with it because floral, baby, floral. Look at this floral. Yeah, I just have to talk about this floral. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Beautiful. Now this, I only have a couple months in here because I took 2020 out, but then of course I added my own um, filler sheets in because this is my planner. Okay. So long story short, you need to download your photos. You need to download them on a recurring basis. For me, it's every month, the first of the month I download my photos and then you need to, um, what do I want to say? Streamline your devices. Don't have four devices. Cause I will tell you there was at one point in time I had three devices. Oh no, I'm sorry. At one time I had four devices every single month, four devices. 
oh, it drove me bonkers. And one of them was my husband's trail camera, and one was the uh, this one, my iPhone, and then my big camera. No, I said no, that's too much. I just I had to streamline it. So uh, trail cameras is a whole nother system. <laughs> A whole nother topic okay but uh yes so streamline your devices put it in your planner and do it okay it's just one of those things like brushing your teeth you just got to do it okay uh let me look at my notes here and then uh when you are downloading your photos put them in a folder in which makes sense to you maybe by chronological is not doesn't make sense to you that's totally fine you come up with your own system but i think for most of us having that by the the year and then the month i think is the most concise way and the most clear way to do that okay even though we may not scrap chronological it's simple to keep your photos stored and download uh, in a chronological manner okay and i think that is all i have for that Yes. Okay. So I probably preached enough about downloading your photos. And I will tell you a fun little story. A couple years ago, I was an at and getting a new phone. You know, that whole deal takes uh, half your life away getting a new phone. So we were in there for hours and a family came in and they were getting new phones. And so the one gentleman said to the other gentleman, you have over 300 some photos on your phone. What do you want to do with them? He says, delete them. I don't do anything with them. And I thought, oh, and my heart broke. And I got so consumed with this other gentleman deleting his photos I got so distracted I couldn't focus on what I needed and my little girl said to me mom get over it apparently he don't care about him so why should you and so uh, let me just say that right now I'm glad I brought that up you are not responsible for anybody else's memories but your own okay I just want to say that right now because if you t if you okay well grandpa has this and my uncle Mark has this and my my aunt uh, Sally has this and and, and and cousin John has this no, well, it doesn't matter. That is their memories. You are in charge of your own memories, your own <laughs> saving of uh, documents, okay? Because if you take on everybody else's, you'll never get anything else done. That's all I'm going to say. You are in charge of your own memories, no one else's. Now, as parents, we do that for our children. But once they get a certain stage, they're responsible for their own as well. Just want to say that. Okay, so I'm going to take a little break there for a minute. <sighs> take a deep breath. <laughs> and then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about, okay, we downloaded them. And they're off the device and onto our computer. What do we do next? Because I'm telling you what, I've talked to many, many people about this. Okay, so hang on. I'll be right back. Okay, so now let's talk about saving our photos because we just talked about downloading them and downloading your photos is completely different than saving your photos, okay? Because whether you download them yourself or someone else does that, you have to have a system set forth in which you're saving your photos because if you're not saving them, then why did you download them, okay? It goes hand in hand, okay? So I'm going to talk about quickly about how I used to do it because you, know, you can't do it that way anymore, uh, the old school but I did it that way for years and why I had them do the switch, okay? So let's talk about saving our photos. Oh, I know, it's the boring stuff, ladies. I know, it's the boring stuff. And I'm not the most high-tech person, and we're going to talk about that in just a minute, where you can go to get resources and help from other people when it comes to this category. Because uh, what you may need to do is maybe not what I have no idea about, so uh, you need to rely on someone else, okay? So uh, what we're going to talk about is for years since I just went digital and we're going to talk about pre-digital, how I store those in just a minute. Okay. So uh, when I went digital in 2004, uh, I started saving my photos. And so then what I would do is I would save, uh, save them. Actually, in the very beginning, I went to Walmart <laughs> and Walmart uh, would save them on a disc for, or, you know, CD for me. Okay. And, um, so that was easy, <laughs> but I didn't get to Walmart very often, you know, um, but then I didn't take as many photos as I do now. So, uh, I would get a disc or a CD, whatever you want to call that. And then I would, um, file them. And so I filed them in, uh, organizers like this. And this is what I used for years. And I wanted to show you how I have them labeled on my shelf. Okay. And I want to say one thing right now, however you store your photos, it needs to be in a protective manner, no heat, no sun, no cold. You know what I'm talking about. Don't let them sit in the dashboard of your car because it's not going to work. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, it's so the same with your photos. Uh, these devices are the same thing. So I'm just going to flip this up for a minute. And this is how I say or labeled all of these uh, CD holders. And I would just put the year. And so one of these holders was uh, two to three years for me. And so if you would open one up, which I'm going to open one up. 
Okay, so I'm going to briefly show how I uh, house and organize my uh, CDs that I have stored for photos for years. I do something a little different now because times change, but I just wanted to briefly show this because this is also one of the same type of cases I use for my negatives, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. And so, of course, you know, I just have it labeled on the spine what they are, and I have them lined up on my closet uh, shelf. Uh, I have about seven or eight of these cases, and that's just organized by year on the spine, very easy to get to, and then also to very easy to get to if I need to grab them in a hurry and that type of thing you know just something quick to um, to be able to get these to these quickly now these uh, come with um, these cardboard inserts you know this packaging and I say keep that because over the years this actually helps protect keep these cases in a better better manner okay so I wanted to show and so basically these come with by four sleeves and uh, that's how I did it for years since 2004 this is how I've done it so 2004 to 2017 13 years this is how I have uh, stored my uh, stored my photos as far as the downloads okay to protect them so what i would do is i would simply write the year and the, the data the year and the the month and then i would put one of one because then i did always did a backup so i for the december 2017 this is my photos for the month okay and then of course you see january 18 because this is when i started to do things different at the end of 2017 uh again i had 2018 january one of one 2018 January one of one backup okay so for every time that I save my photos you know I download them per month and then I save them at the same time that I download them and for many 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 years I put them on CDs and I saved them per month okay one CD for the month and then I would uh, have a backup because you know things can go bad okay so I'm going to close this up for a minute it might be getting a little glare and we're going to talk about something for a minute because um, why is it important to well we all know we have to download we all know that we need to save them but then why is it important how you determine what you're saving them on let's just have that conversation right there so you can see basically for every month since I went digital I had at least two CDs for every month okay so that meant at least 24 discs per the year now if I went on a trip I usually would take those photos and put them on a separate CD uh, because it would be too many or if I had videos and I think I had one earmarked here I have to watch what I show because you know I have names and places and all that good stuff okay so you can see for October 2015 I have one of one and then one of one my backup and then I had videos okay and so that's what I did so for October of 2015 I had three okay so I just want to show that that is how I do that and then sometimes I would have another CD and then I would just um, store my husband's trail cameras uh, I would keep that separate because it just got to be too many photos for just one CD for the month and so I always did a backup and then from uh, videos always one-on-one -on -one, trail camera photos and that's what I want to talk about in the last segment that I do still uh, do that for my husband I don't do it every month I do it maybe twice a year uh, because his trail camera holds a lot of photos and then a lot of those are just deleted anyways and then but his favorites I will save on a separate CD okay that's when I was doing CD okay but I just wanted to show that for all those years I did the same thing and I did the same thing every month and so that was my key point whatever you need to do streamline it and then do it every single month or whatever uh, you know maybe it's quarterly for you definitely don't do it um, <laughs> don't go past four months or three months uh, and we'll talk about that in just a minute so I wanted to show that okay so now let's talk about another uh, CD case I have here because what do you do these cases are nice is my point okay they're very affordable and you can absolutely if you have some VHS's yes back in the day that they have some special maybe like an, a wedding or a birthday or something like that you can absolutely get uh, four or six or eight of those in this and this is a quick way because I'm all about having things organized in the same uh, type of container meaning I want all of my photos saved in this way okay does that make sense so I not only have my CDs I have some VHS's and then I'll show you how I did my negatives when it was pre-digital okay I hope this isn't boring <laughs> 
I know it's a boring topic, but it's something that has to be covered because it has to be, it's something that has to be done. Okay, it's just one of those chores we have to do. So you can see on the spine, what do I have? I have 35 millimeter negatives, and so that is how I have my negatives. Now, my negatives are not something that I use because I basically have printed every photo because that was the beauty before digital is that you took your pictures, uh, you got them developed, and that was one and done. It's not that way anymore, okay? Uh, love the beauty of digital, but, you know, it's complicated. So what I would do is I just kept the sleeves from Walmart or Sam's Club, whatever it was, see? And then I would put them as best as I could for the year, and I rubber band them. I don't have them in order other than the year because it's still, sometimes even if you're looking at them, it's hard to tell what they are. And I don't want to mix them up because it's probably per month or per trip. So I just left them the sleeve they were in and I just put a, a, a year rubber band them together and this is where I have all of my pre-digital and yeah 2003 that was the last year that um, before I went digital so this is where I have all my slides you know not my slides I'm sorry my negatives in the same type of system that I have my CDs I just wanted to show that because I got asked what do I do with pre-digital okay and I don't worry about working from these negatives because I basically have already had all of those printed um, but I will tell you that <laughs> getting uh, a slide reader is on my wish list because I have something I want to do with some older photos down the road. But again, that's down the road. I have enough trouble just trying to maintain what I do now. <laughs> so that's just a long-term project, a dream project. Again, you see how I have that cardboard insert? It just keeps things protected. Okay. So now let's talk about what I do now. <laughs> for saving photos because this gets a little hot and heavy okay so what I do now is flash drives and uh, believe me yours truly I drugged my feet and drugged my feet and drugged my feet I did not want to do this okay because uh, you see clearly for the last 13 for 13 years in a row I had a system and I had it down pat I knew what to do and I did it religiously didn't have a problem with it. Then the computer crash, I had to get out of doing CDs because with a Mac and some HP, things did not drive very well and I had to start doing flash drives. So long story short, I went to many different places, many different photo uh, places, camera shops and this and that to talk about downloading photos, not downloading, saving, okay? Saving your photos, okay? So now some people will say hard drives, hard drives. Okay, yes, however, when I proposed this one question to everybody I talked to, I said, well, what happens if you lose that hard drive? How are you going to prevent from losing all of your photos? Okay, now here's where the whole topic comes from. And I would say this is a personal decision you have to make on your own. For me, if I have to lose photos, which I have, I only lost one month. I cannot imagine if I would have lost a year's worth of photos. I it would just, I would be so upset because there are a lot of memories. There's a lot of stories that happen just in a month, let alone a whole year. Okay. And I know some of you have lost photos as well. So every time I went to a camera shop or a tech guy or an IT guy, and I talked to whoever would listen when it came to my photo problems. Okay. Because I had to transition from CDs. They were very, very affordable. I could do two, sometimes four, sometimes six of those CDs a month. It was very affordable. Okay. Not, not a problem. You know, it, it takes up a little space to house them. Not that big of a deal. So what I had to come down to was uh, cloud devices and online. That is not an option for me. I don't care for that. Uh, so that was never an option for me. The next option was hard drives. I think they're very expensive. And then if something goes bad, which they do, then you've lost all of those photos. So then I kept proposing, well, what do you do about this? What do you do? How can you... Uh, store your photos with the least amount of casualty. That was always my question. And so every one of these guys at the end of the day would say, the way you're doing it is the best way, meaning saving per month, okay? Even guys that would, um, that really like the cloud devices, okay? Or the tech guys that like the cloud devices because you don't have things to, you know, to organize and keep. And then also to the hard drive guys. They would say, yes, that's the problem. <laughs> if something happens to your hard drive, that then you lose them all. So every one of these gentlemen, and this was about a year's worth of talking to different people, they would say, the way you're doing it is the best way. 
And every one of those said to me, you're doing it better than most people. So that told me that I still need to save my photos per month, but I can't do that <laughs> with a backup. Okay. So long, long story short, what I do now is that I uh, use flash drives. I use one for every six months of the year. That's just, that's just how I do it. So this one here is 2018. That is my first six months. And then this one here is my 2018 and this is my backup. So uh, I use one flash drive for six months and then I do a backup of those six months. And then for the last half of 2018, they're saved here and then that's my backup. And that is now what I've come to. So instead of those CDs for a year, this is what I have. So what I'm saying is I went from storing photos per monthly to now I save them every six months. Okay. But I download them every month. Okay. So I download once a month, but I save, um, and I, I mean, I save them every month, but on this device, if something was happened to this device, I lose six months. If something went bad with a CD, I lost one month. Okay. This is just where technology has, uh, run them up and it's all good. It's good to have everything concise and on one device like, uh, a hard drive okay I love the idea of having a hard drive but I have a hard time dealing with the concept if that goes bad and I'm relying on that hard drive that's too many photos for me for a hard drive I just can't get over that I have a hang-up that's my personal opinion that's my problem okay um, but I do suggest if you have a hard drive you have a backup of that hard drive and I know they're expensive but after talking with so many people about this category about photos that is what they basically say it said if you're gonna have a hard drive you need to have a backup of your hard drive because they can go bad anything we use that can go bad we know that so with CDs all those years if one went bad no big deal. You know, I had a backup and if that went bad, no big deal. It was just a month. So now it's six months. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, my uh, little one was recently talking to me that one of her professors is very, 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 very diligent about these flash drives. And he said, if you're going to use a flash drive every single day, you better realize they're not going to last as long as you think they're going to. So keep that in the back of your mind. And this is why I have a backup. Okay. So right here, these four little uh, scan discs, that is my entire 2018 saved, okay? And then, of course, I have documents on another and then other things, and then this is my husband's trail camera. So uh, I do not no longer need these uh, CD cases. I now use uh, something like this, and this in and of itself has been a big topic because I've went to different people and said, what are you storing these flash drives in, okay? And so now they really don't have anything just for flash drives. Now they have gadget containers, meaning they hold these end cords and this and that. I don't need all of that. I just want something to house all of this. That was a two month deal right there trying to find something, something affordable. So I will tell you one thing I ran across uh, temporarily is that you can use pencil cases to hold your flash drives in a very uh, affordable, uh, small manner. I don't want a $20 gadget case for flash drives when something as simple as this you can get um probably by three years worth of flash drives in one of a, a pencil pouch and that's all this is this came from staples and the reason i like this was because the interior was very soft and so that was important for me because i am one to protect these but you could also use something as simple as one of these four by six photo case okay and i think what i will do is maybe if i use this i maybe uh put a uh a backer of cardstock in there and then just keep them a little bit protected maybe even put a piece of fabric in there just to keep this stuff protected and i know that seems a little crazy but i'm very uh, particular about saving my photos i mean this is what we're down to right okay so that is how i uh uh save my photos now it's on flash drives whatever device you do make sure you have a backup. That's about all I can give you the advice. And whether it's uh, cloud devices, I don't know nothing about that. But I just know storing online is just not an option for me. I don't feel comfortable with that. And then um, hard drives, uh, very expensive. And then you got to make sure you have a backup. But I am now, I, I use these flash drives. And I get these at Sam's Club, a two pack for about $30. So it's going to cost me about $60 per year to store my photos. This cost $60. These four pieces cost me $60. Okay. Which was, which is way more expensive than CDs, but <laughs> look at the space this takes up. I'll probably get about three years in that box. Okay. 
So I wanted to recommend a product uh, for labeling your devices as far as your flash drives and CDs, if you're still using that. I, I, I was sad when I had to stop doing it that way, but moving on, I wanted to recommend these uh, Slick Writers. These are by American Crafts. I think they are far the best uh, pens as far as labeling items, whether it's uh, a slick surface plastic, whether it's a flash drive, uh, whether it's a CD, anything. These are fabulous. You can get them at Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're $5.99 a pack. Use a coupon and you get three different fonts, uh, sizes of you get a fine medium and a bold point is what i'm saying for these pens and for something of this small nature you have to use a fine point and i think they make a fine point sharpie so that would work but these are quick drying ink and so they don't smear as many times and i've used these for years and i'm still glad <laughs> they're available i love i love these pens okay and so these flash drives have very small spaces to write on so you're going to have to make sure you uh, utilize the best pen you can because this is going to be on here for a while and you want to make sure something doesn't smear because if you had this full flash drives and you didn't have them labeled well how would you know well where's grandma's birthday <laughs> or where's johnny's swimming party you know you have to know and so that's what i want to talk about now i wanted to say one other thing is that when you're downloading photos and then you're taking those downloads and you're storing them on a device, whatever it is, do not erase those photos from your devices until you know for a fact that those photos are now on that flash drive or in that cloud or on that hard drive, whatever you're using, because if you don't check these and you think, 2018 is on here and then you erase them you have no way to get these back okay so double check your saved photos before you erase them i do that every single month you have to do that one little extra step because i do know of people that thought that they had their photos saved erased the photos went to their flash drive or hard drive or whatever and realized they didn't get saved so day uh, take your time and double check that um before you erase anything okay just a little step okay so now let's talk about something else how are you uh, saving your photos what device are you using what is uh, working for you everybody's going to be different everybody's going to have a different answer and it's all okay okay there's no wrong way it's what you want okay and talking to all these gentlemen in uh, photo shops and camera shops and it guys and tech guys and they would all say um even one gentleman, the last one I talked to, he said, all I can tell you is that you're doing it better than most people because saving photos is not a priority for people. Now, as scrapbookers, it comes with the territory. I think we just automatically save our uh, photos. It's important to us because that's our main supply is our photos. And so um, where was I going with that? I have no idea. Rabbit hole. Um, but whatever device you do use, please share below. And if you have any tips and tricks. Um, but the only thing I want to say is please don't bash how another person does it everybody is different okay that's all i want to say if people rely on cloud devices please do that if you like your hard drive please do that i think whatever you use as long as you're doing it like that one guy told me we're doing it better than most people and can i get an amen for that yes at least we're doing something whatever device we do okay because i know some people <laughs> i went to one it guy and he's like oh you can't use those cds you can't use those cds and i said give me one reason why i can't he said well you're not going to be able to use them and i said excuse me uh my husband has devices that's on floppy disk and i can still access that material and how long ago has floppies uh been around it's been a long time so i think for you know i think i'll be able to read my cds for some time okay and just like with this maybe a couple years from now this device will not be um the best option it, that's just what we have we have to work with what we have and what we can afford i think 60 dollars a year I think that's okay. It's not the most frugal thing, but right now that's the only option I have. That's for me. And to know that if something happens, this is only six months of a year. That gives me a little bit better. Um, it calms my nerves a little bit better than a hard drive and things of that nature. So that's just my point of view. Okay. So please share below what you're using, what you're finding success with. Uh, and how do you get over that? 
fear of losing photos okay if you use a hard drive how did you how do you manage that so that you don't lose uh, a whole year's worth of photos because I would love to know how other people do this what your thinking is what your thought process is because we can all learn and share with each other okay so I know this was the boring part of the our photo series next time we are going to be talking about printing photos yes that's what we're going to talk about next because we already got them download downloaded we have them saved now let's ta start talking about printing. And again, that's going to have a lot of different answers. So there's no wrong way or right way to approach this whole category. It's just whatever works for you. Okay, that's all I have for today at RTS. Come back because you never know what we're going to do. Bye.